There we go. Hey everyone, my mic was messed up, so let me fix the desktop audio too because OBS had a bit of a crash. There we go. But uh, hey everyone, we're here for Echoes of the Institute session two, three. On three. Uh, Squire's not going to be here tonight, but everyone else is here, so let's go and hang out with them. You're all unmuted. I also just need to test to make sure the audio is working so everyone speak. Hello. There we go. Perfect. You're all here. The Rizzler everyone all the way here. in the far do, do, corner, do, 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 Melvin. Do, do, do. Watch Melvin and Mel. Watch Melvin yeah. learn how to get Riz unintentionally throughout this storyline. <laughs> Riz Marvin is the most important character here, obviously. Mm. It's Marvin's story. We're just all we just all exist in it. We all just live in it. We're side characters, honestly, to Melvin. And are these fellow students in the room with you right now, Melvin? <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> the finale episode. It turns out Melvin just thought everyone else. Up. This was Melvin's fan fiction. Oh <laughs> my god! No, 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 no. We don't. We don't. A bit better. <laughs> well, no. Oh, he he's beautiful. humble. He's humble. Um, like it or not, Melvin is the peak of physique. No, he <laughs> certainly isn't. <laughs> Uh, where is your table? I know I have one for you guys. Did I not make it for you guys? I feel like I did. Give me a sec. Oh, like table. I'm not in as a DM. Wait, no, I am. Okay, this is silly. I'll just roll. Okay, give me a second. One, two, three, four, five. Be fine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Uh, F-Ziri, what happened last time? Oh boy, it's my turn. Um, uh, let me... Oh, fuck it up, you get a point of inspiration! <laughs> I am. So, notes. Okay, so, uh, the last time that we, uh, played, we, uh, obviously went to, uh, check out our dorms. We had a new, uh, player join us, which was, uh, very exciting. And then we went uh, to spend some free time in the uh, sort of cafeteria eatery. We went to the cafe and Rathaniel D. Rathaniel D. was a jerk to uh, the uh, waitress, which was super fun. Uh, and we uh, spilled some coffee, which was awesome and <laughs> on him. And uh, we all, many of us anyway, had very exciting dreams that were... Uh, uh, tailored to sort of each of our own future destinies, which is very exciting. Uh, and we also got paid, or we got at least some cash, uh, which we're going to spend this episode to prepare for our adventure. Correct. All right. Uh, I will give you guys a point of inspiration. Ooh. And any previous points that you had are gone because you guys took a long rest. So you're back to one. Uh, all right, let me get the music. I uh, got something. I've been inspired. Yes, you have. Use it while you can. Inspired. Righty. I took the top bunk by the window. All righty. So, as previously stated, oh, look sure to return off the GM lair for stream. Good thing they didn't see anything behind the curtain. Um, you guys have two days of downtime before you can start leaving. So to give a little bit of details there, you do not have to leave immediately. Uh, but you have to complete the job within like the month or you fail it, and you're going to have to pay them back money. Uh, and it's bad cred for the Ether Prima house. So these two days are your jump off point to prepare, get ready, attend some lectures, maybe study, um, or look into anything that you want with the Academy's assets before you have to start thinking about traveling out to where you need to go. So 
First and foremost, as I previously mentioned, uh, Prince Dubois, a very famous merchant, has visited the Academy today. Grab all of his nonsense. That he's just ready. Um, and of course, you can attend lectures to gain information about anything you would like. You can go to the library, like the library and archives, uh, to try and research any topics or take out any books that you can learn from and maybe learn even more from. But, um, shopping wise, I think we're going to do that together. Uh, just so you get to know the man. And look. Put it in. But of course, like, if you want to grab breakfast or anything like that beforehand, feel free. Even though there's breakfast here and whatnot. So, what would you like to do? Breakfast, of course. Yeah. It is the most important meal of the day. Melvin's going to eat the crumbliest, messiest granola bar in his bed. <laughs> oh, God. God. Cliff will just say, oh, dear. You need to clean that up, and he casts Presidigitation. Um, excuse oh. me, I just got to feed some of that Radicus Finch. <gasps> Your rat just screeches. Uh, it does not require sustenance. It feeds on yeah, your like suffering. Not to offer. Seems kind of like a jet move not to offer. It just it's looks right at you. There. Um. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you guys can easily get some breakfast together. Get your mobile co mobile coffee. I don't know, I'm tired. But, I assume you would like to go where the merchant is. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let me line you up. Yeah. Sounds good. Yes. And Cliff will yeah. still join you for this part, and then he'll go off, because I got the autopilot, this sucker, this sad boy. Am I proud of my best friend for <laughs> making a sad character his first time around? Yes. <laughs> it's 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 truly a canon event for D&D players. It is. And also yeah. him rolling a ridiculous amount of natural 20s on his first session. True. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the emotional support rat, I just imagine it blinking with one eye at a time at all times. Well, yeah, it Absolutely. blinks on it blinks on its butt. Remember? Hold on. Oh yeah. It has butt eyes. <laughs> How talented. Amazing. But yeah, you guys you guys see it as a normal obese rat. Yeah, but then it's that. To Melvin. Yeah. Ooh. And anyone who if they had true sight. So the book knows. Oh god, wait a minute. So your book oh. knows Devinar, but he hasn't said anything. Also I did show Kat what um their book looked like. When he was alive. Pretty good stuff. But yes, you make your way to the courtyard. It is quite busy. Uh, first and foremost, you can imagine from a giant uh, clockwork cart. Um, no horse or anything like that. Uh, but it is out here in the middle of the courtyard. The arcane defenders are all kind of like, oh, but they're watching it and they've been surmised of this. You see here and there students coming in and out of the, the cart as well as professors um, here and there. Uh, but you all come up. How common would this sort of like clockwork stuff be oh insanely common uh okay. as there are engines for automobiles as they are known in the upper city of e etherios 
Uh, electricity exists in its basest form. Uh, basically, this is all like burgeoning technology in when it comes to that kind of level of tech in Knoll. Uh, so there's electricity. Other places that don't have electricity use ether crystals to make power. Um, then the, mm, Ethereos, automobiles are common. And then there are uh, engine carts, which are like automated engine carts that allow for people to travel throughout the continent uh, without horses, like without the need of horses. It's, it's a steam cart. Uh, so everything largely runs on steam and a little bit of ether here and there to just keep it running. But this is definitely the largest because like when I talk automobiles, like it's like early, early automobiles. Like to barely functional, hard to get, hard to maintain. Uh, this one's very large, has three engines on its back, and is rusted yet ornate at the same time with these two giant wheels in the back, and one small one in the front. Rain. Uh, but as you all walk up, a figure comes out of the cart door. You see a small cloaked penguin. Blue in color. Uh, very weird hands. Uh, you guys can make me uh, history or arcana checks. There it is. You know who there they are. You, you, well, this is a different character. <laughs> this is a different character. Hmm, I've never seen this individual in my life. <laughs> All right. Oh, what a, what a strange creature. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, Arlena, did you want to make a history check or an arcana check? Yep, just two seconds. It's, it's taking its sweet ass time rolling. <laughs> gotcha. I think my um, what's it called? It's I'm always rolling at advantage in certain checks due to the class feature thing. Yeah, you can. There are ways to fix it if you need to, but it's it's finicky. Right, um. There we go. All right, all of you know what a dowar is. Uh, they are short, pudgy, flightless uh, penguins. They are they come from the Feywild, but live in wild space. Uh, they are very pro prolific merchants in the fact that they are illegal merchants. <laughs> they, they, they sell and buy on the black market. Um, they, are, they stand at three feet tall. Uh, each of them are a different color. They don't have wings. They have hands. Um, they can also communicate telepathically. Um, but a lot of them wear cloaks or weird clothing. They are also addicted to sugar. And uh, with a natural 20, Devonar, you know that they are responsible for the phenomena known as space clouds. Space. Correct. Okay. They created an entire race of space clowns. On accident. And on purpose. How strange. How strange. But uh, this Dovar comes out. Oh, uh, hello. You, uh, you must be the ones. Uh, hi. My name is Pagu. Pagu Pagugi. It's a pleasure to meet you. I work for the boss. Hey. Uh, excuse me, your card seems to be blocking the, the thoroughfare. I think that's pretty illegal. Oh no, we're allowed to be here. Uh, the the headmaster allowed us. We're we're friends. Oh, I'm sure you're allowed to be here. I'm just saying that you're blocking the main thoroughfare. Like this is kind of the main the main road, my guy. You can't just set up shop here. Uh, he can, Pretty yeah. Rude. Uh, also they could just this walk guy. around it. What if someone else has a cart? Unlikely, but but good point. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I saying. digress. The boss wants to meet you all. Come on, go inside. Oh my god. Oh. He's so adorable. 
I am. I'm also certified royalty, baby. <laughs> I... Ah, this explains a lot. He gives, he gives the most awkward wink, and then he waddles into the ship, into the cart. Well, I don't see any reason we shouldn't immediately follow after the strange penguin man. He definitely has charisma. I, yeah. Well, that is for certain, Lilith says, though he could stand to be a bit more attractive. I, I want to pet him. I wouldn't, honestly. I'm just gonna grab the other map and then put you in his shop. Mm. Lilith's just out here calling people ugly. <laughs> yeah! It makes sense for what kind of demon she is. True. Yeah. Where is his shop? Oh my god, I didn't know how old the tokens on this page were. And there's like pre Red Orc Lord helmet here and everything. Holy shit. <laughs> what happens when you don't clean up your toys after a game? I mean, they just stay there forever in a permanent limbo hell, I guess. Not my problem. <laughs> They're not real. <laughs> Cursed lost souls doomed forever. They're real to me. I gotta get his theme. Give me a second. Oh, theme. The voice man. <laughs> He's got two, but I'm playing it safe because you never know. Uh, you all go into the cart, and the space around you grows. You feel yeah. a slight twinge of dizziness, as if you've gone up a high elevation rapidly. You find yourselves in a large, one-story shop, and you look out the windows and you see you are on top of a snowy peak mountain. You look oh. to... It's bigger on the inside. Yeah, that's how it works. And you see these tiny little doors, these glass doors that open. And from within them... <laughs> all different yeah. versions of Pangu. Different hairstyles, different outfits all come out. Hey, boss. Hey, boss. Hey, boss. What's up? Oh, you know, uh, we had some good cells over in uh, Vanheim. Oh, well, they're also dealing with the werewolf problem still. It's crazy. Oh, what about Edsgate? Oh, they're doing pretty okay. They got the things that they needed that we're not supposed to talk about. Uh, well, yeah, boss wants you to go back out and do stuff. You're not supposed to be here when we have customers. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Oh, who's that? Oh, wow. They're, they're all really cool. That bird's pretty. And they all just walk through again. <laughs> Sorry about that. Those are my popping penguins. It's a spell. It, am I awake right now? Maybe. I, you know what? Let's go with no until we figure something out. I apologize for my... What's the word? Employee. And you hear the tapping of a cane as walking around the corner. You see this individual. You see a tall man. Uh, a bit muscular, you can tell that from his build. He has brown hair that is gray with two gray streaks in the front. He's completely, his skin is completely obscured. Uh, dressed in clothes from head to toe, wearing gloves. This ornate gilded white mask with gilded gold on it. 
slits to see through, and he wears a nice top hat with the symbol of Etro on it. Uh, he wears a red coat, a uh, cloak kind of coat combination over his shoulders, and he has a cane that also has the symbol of Etro, the goddess of fate and time on it. Uh, and he's just wearing a nice uh, kind of suit and then a sweater underneath it. Uh, but you all can roll me history checks on this individual. Mm. 16, 30, 23. Makes sense that Melvin wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get out much. Who's this, Jamoke? Uh, but uh, as our Elena's role comes through, because I know it's given you a, a bit of a issue um this is prince dubois uh so anyone with a 13 or higher because it's he's pretty famous uh it's just whatever you depending on how high you got it will give you more details this is one of the eight lords of socrif the eight lords of so socrif are the wealthiest individuals in socrif he is number two um right underneath lord luxury uh, Prince Dubois arrived to the scene some time ago, like within the past 50 years. Uh, he is a very capable merchant running his chain, Lord Lu uh, Dubois' cabinet, which is a big competitor with Lord Luxury's Customs, or LLC. Um, he is mysterious and enigmatic. Uh, but it is rumored that he is a member of the Lord's Council, which is the secret council that helps govern and take care of the threats to Socrath. Um He is in a lot of different businesses. Uh, and Buffany already said it in the Twitch chat, he is one of the he is number one of the five most eligible bachelors in Ethereos, uh, in Ethereos magazine. But all around, uh, it is also rumored that the reason he wears the mask that he has never taken off, no one has ever seen his face, is because he is too beautiful that it would instantly kill those who see his face. Whether that is true or false, who is to say? But he stands before you. It is good to meet you all. I have been expecting your visit for quite some time. I am Prince Dubois. As I'm sure you all know, but welcome to my humble cabinet. It is a pleasure to meet you. And is anyone I thought this was a good wagon. formal bow? And is anyone in this group fateless? I don't think so. I do not. I don't. I know. I don't think I am, unless you're not telling me something. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure. It's been a bit. Is anyone moonborn? Me. Hello. Okay, we got some moon, two, the two that are moonborn. You instantly recognize that somewhere on him he has essence of all the three moons as well mm. on him. But he comes over twirling his cane. But when it comes to goods of all sorts, I am most definitely someone that can aid you. I have all sorts of items, some that you can find in any magic store catalog, some new today, tomorrow, and right now. And I know you are all planning for your assignment soon, so What's the best, best to be equipped. I have all sorts of things. If you are asking what unique pieces I have, I have a few. Give me one second, because uh, I I will I randomly generate some things sometimes from my mm -hmm. reserves to see if there's like featured items of the day. You know. Let's see. Let's roll. And then 93 not that one <laughs> mm, ooh okay 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 more more okay one two three four five six seven eight ooh 
<laughs> you want some good stuff? I guess. I just love listening to the noises Nakra <laughs> makes as they're like picking through what they're gonna do and the evil plans. Oh yes. General DM noises. The just general DM noises are always the best. <laughs> Especially with Knocker, because you never know if they're actually going to be good or if they're going to, like, murder you outright. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything is fine until you hear a oh no. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. No, you, at least you're not like the other group that got the Deck of Wonder. Yeah, the Deck of Wonder is cool. Yeah, that was it. And, and then they got the Bag of Beans as well. Okay. <laughs> They did get the beans. Okay, so beans. kind of fitting. I have some items from the Magical Academy that you can peruse as well. Fun. So many items, so little money. <laughs> Okay, I have a couple of unique items, and then some of those I'll have to make in between, uh, because I have like the stats for them. I just have to earn right. them. Um, and then I have some things from other fun things. So let's start with what he what is like what he's advertising today. Let's start with the advertisement items. First and foremost, I have this. Just pulls out a frickin' orb. <laughs> uh, God. It thrums with huh. fate magic. The orb of the prescient protector. That's all you can get. That. And da, 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 and he holds out a red gem. I have the fabulous gem. I don't have a handout for that one. The Ring of Puzzler's Wit. And... The Rogue's Mantle. And I have... The Deck of Oracles. Actually, no, wait, wrong one. Hold on, let me double check. Okay, it is. Uh, the Deck of Oracles. There we go. So those are the featured items, but everything else you see on the shopping center, or if you don't see it, and you want to know if he has it, you would just roll for it. Uh, so yeah. He'll show those off. These are my featured items today, but let us start down the line, shall we? So, we're going to start with Alistair. Oh. Well, what he would... will you like to buy he's looking at the orb he just showed and he'll say it emanates an interesting magic what are its capabilities mm. i am so glad you asked you see as i reopen it i don't know why i closed it i'm silly this is a rare item it does require attunement uh the item has six charges uh and it gains 1d4 plus two expended charges daily at dawn you can use it as a spell casting focus. Uh, future shield. As a bonus action, you can expend one charge to choose a friendly creature you can see within 30 feet of you and look into its future, predicting an attack and placing a magical ward over it for the next minute. When that creature is hit by an attack during this time, it gains a plus five bonus to its AC until the end of its turn, potentially causing the triggering attack to miss. The effect ends early after it causes an attack to miss, or you use this property again. Interesting. And how much would this cost? This would cost... 
typically a thousand gold pieces, but I am willing to trade or sell it for lower depending. You are an occultist. Such things would be good in your repertoire. I know quite a few capable occultists myself. Yes, I would be lying if I said I wasn't interested. Hmm. Right. So other than, are there any other items you wanted to learn about? There are certainly a lot of them. Hmm. What about the gem? The fabulous gem? Yeah, the fabulous gem. I can actually display this one. <laughs> Uh, it's an uncommon item. It requires a timid. This red glittering gem is commonly found embedded in a ring of brooch. While you wear it, you can create uh, counterfeit coins. Create a pile of coins worth no more than 100 gold in total in an unoccupied space within 10 feet of yourself. The pile must appear on a surface that can support it. After one hour, the coins vanish regardless of where they are. Once you do that, you can't use it until dawn. Illusory fashion. As a bonus action, you can change the appearance of your clothing and armor. You can change the color, style, and apparent quality of what you're wearing and can make it as, wear as if you're wearing different garments entirely. Hmm. This is definitely an interesting item to be in his shop, given the laws of magic explicitly state you cannot create money with magic. And the deck of oracles. Deck of oracles. This is a rare, rare wondrous item. The illustri illustrations on this card, uh, this deck of oracle cards, move or change subtly when viewed indirectly. When you finish a long rest, you can spend 10 minutes consulting the cards for an omen of the coming day. Roll d20 and record the number. Once in the next 8 hours, immediately after a creature within 60 feet of you makes an attack, a ability check, or saving throw, you can use your reaction, discard the d20 roll, Creature must use the number you rolled in place of its roll. Uh, it's a very good item for divination wizards. <laughs> um, additionally, while holding the cards, you can cast divination from them. Once it is used, it cannot be used until next dawn. You can literally divine from them. Oh god, so many cool things. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's just some of them. You know, they're alright. Oh god, I'm like torn between the orb and this deck now. Um, they both fit Alistair pretty well. How much okay. is the deck? The deck? True. That is a bit pricey. That one is 2000 However, he is also willing to negotiate price or buy. Depends. He's also down for favors here and there. It just depends what you're pitching to him. Mm, I would make you roll to see like how successful you can be. Like, hey, I I could totally work these off. If he has good deals, then he makes questionable business decisions. Okay. All right. I think. I think I want to buy the orb. Okay. And then I guess. I think I want to buy the orb. If anyone wants to get the deck, I'd I'd probably willing to pitch in, uh, two hundred gold. To be honest, I want the deck. So <laughs> I, I'd be willing to pitch in two hundred gold for that, if someone wanted it. The deck. Oh, the deck does require two hundred. But how's your attunement looking at this level? Come on. Well, I, I actually have three dudes. items already in tune. <laughs> that, two, that's, two that's when you get the Mystic Conflux feet, Taps Head. Get four attunement no. slots. <laughs> True. Which, by the way, that is I a chat. I have plenty of attunement slots for you. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> your yeah, rat, your rat just looks at you, Melvin, and just... Because you don't get magic items. <laughs> I'm just, me I'm just messing. He wouldn't say that. He's, he can't speak. He can only he, say anything like he can that. only scream. Ah! <laughs> he can only scream. <laughs> the pain. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Uh, so Alistair will say, um, "I would 
be more than willing to purchase the orb. Mm. It is typically a thousand gold. However, if you are willing to negotiate, that is also possible. Hmm. Maybe if you give us a good deal on that orb in this deck here, mm. we won't we won't narc let you have uh you know illegal stuff contraband. <laughs> I don't as think it were. Have to go well, Melvin. Mm. Cute. I'm negotiating. Don't Melvin, worry, guys. I got this. He's a man of great importance. I wouldn't do that. I... It is okay. I too was young and naive. However, if you are willing to pile these items together in a bulk buy, depending on what else your allies purchase, I can certainly arrange this. That, or I can give you a deal. I will sell you this item for 500 gold, however, the next magic item you find, that you take, you must give to me. Don't take that deal. Don't take that deal. It's a bad deal. Mm. Super <laughs> bad deal. My dad is super pissed. I mean... You hear in your head, actually, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Lilith, what do you think? I Dad, you, don't my know. My dad's talking to me. It's like, Dad, you literally said I have to bring you artifacts. What if we find a goddamn artifact? You have to give it to him. Fair. Uh, Lilith looks at you. Hmm. I mean, he is rather charming. But, at the same time, you could just bulk by if you really wanted to. Hmm. What does everyone else think? Bulk buy? Hmm. Well, I was interested in the deck, but I, I don't know that I want to give up anything that I'm currently attuned to at this time. I don't know if anyone no, else... No, it would be, it would be the next item you find in the wild. So, next magic... Oh. Like, if... When I roll loot for you guys after something in... Like, when you're traveling... If you are the one that says, I will take this item, it will legit disappear out of your hands. <laughs> and Dubois will have it. The one time we roll like a legendary item and it's just yoink. Yeah, it's but it literally would have to be the Alistair next saying, I will take it. Yep, Alistair right? would, would be the one saying, I'll take this, and Alistair would lose the item. Actually, that's actually, I mean, that's actually not that bad now I think about it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can be clever. You know what? What does everyone else think? Does, should I take the deal? Yes, because yeah. you can manipulate the options into your favor. I like you. I'm going to take the deal. <laughs> <laughs> and he holds I've never taken in. a bad deal. Very well. He comes up to you, holds out his hand, and you begin to see these purple... Spectral threads form around your hand and his. And with his other hand, he taps the cane. And only he can, only Alistair and Dubois can see these threads. He taps his cane and you watch as it tightens in and goes into your arm. There. That way I know. Just smiles at you. Thank you. The passive Riz is tangible. Mm hmm. And then he'll walk <laughs> backward. Now, what else were you looking to purchase? Hmm. Alright, and That's I did, I just made the orb, so go ahead and add that to your inventory. Uh, the orb of the Prescient Protector. Hmm. How much for that thief's mantle? That rogue's mantle? Yes. Let me tell you what it does as well. It is a rare item. It does require attunement. Uh, this dark hood... Hold on. 
I can just do this. Uh, you get uh, dark vision. If you already had it, it increases your dark vision range by 60 feet. Move in shadows. When you, while you are in dim light or darkness, you can use a bonus action to teleport along with anything you are wearing or carrying up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see that is also in dim light or darkness. You then have advantage on the first melee attack you make before the end of the turn. And willful enmity. Exhort, you can cast the antagonized the spell from the mantle. Once the spell mantle is cast the spell, it can't cast the spell again until the next dawn. This was made for me. <laughs> he has he has multiple of this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a ma this is a mass produced item. You can't steal my style, bro. That's like cringe. That's a pretty good rogue. And when you attune to it, it will it can take any kind of form. Uh but yes, this he's selling these for four hundred gold. Hmm. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Well, particularly useful. I was wondering if you had a slightly different cloak. Hmm. I'm particularly I'm interested in a displacement cloak. <laughs> he chuckles. Displacement. Interesting. There are rarely any displacer beasts to create such things, but let me check my reserves. Uh, in my role, displacer beasts are endangered. <laughs> uh, let me see, because like, like if, if it gives her a chance to not be touched by people, she wants it. Uh, what rarity is that? Uh, that is a blue, so it's just rare. Rare? Okay, I can roll a 75 or higher. Oh! Yo! <laughs> I do have such a thing, however. It goes for 4,000 gold pieces. That is a bit pricey. Well, and you can understand why they would be so expensive. Unfortunately, can. no barters on this one. AKA the DM knows how dangerous a cloak of displacement is. This is going to have to be an, uh, a, gr a grind for gold. Or you just can oh. try and steal one from someone, I guess. Always possible. Yeah. Very well. I'll have to keep that in mind. I'll pick the other cloak then in the meantime. Very well. And how about this? I will keep this one on reserve for you. I will not I sell it to anyone that. else. I see it was a fine no investment. Word. Taking my style. Um, yep, he looks at you. You most certainly have my word. You are an investment for sure, child of mana. Mm -hmm. And that is capital N M mana. He bites her lip at that and doesn't doesn't respond. We'll check notes. Did I accidentally is your mom's name Mana? <laughs> Can I roll a history check on that or anything? Uh you did not hear that. Only Arlena oh. did. Mm. And you said it was four hundred, correct? Four hundred gold for the rogue's mantle, yes. All right, was there anything else that Alistair was buying, by the way? Um... No, I think that's it for Alistair. Okay. Uh, I'll get right back to you, Arlena, as Theory. You wanted to buy the deck. Well, maybe. It was a, I, I didn't want to give up my attunement slots just yet. Because the ones, the things that I have. Well, we also do quick attunement. So in battle, you can swap in and out of attunements depending oh, really? on what it is. Uh, out, oh. Outside of combat, it is also very easy. Uh, but inside combat, you it might might take it like an action depending on the rarity of the item. Uh, but sure. it is easier to use your whole toolkit. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that's good to know. Um, first off, though, I want to ask a question. When you said uh, he has the essence of all three moons, what mm -hmm. does that mean? Or can I roll to understand like a little bit more what that means? It means yes. Yes. He's uh, thrumming with very palpable energy. Okay. Uh, then before I sort of commit to any purchase, I want to say, uh, uh, Lord Dubois, mm -hmm. I have a question. Do you have anything that you would recommend for uh, someone who is moon-touched such as myself? Uh, Love, I were to say that the moons would have weapons, well, but you can always invest it in ether crystals. They can help boost your magic. Uh, they can help change your attacks. It honestly depends. There are also moon-touched weapons, which can light your way even in dark paths. Uh, you, is there any such moon-touched weapons that you may have? I have a few moon-touched weapons. Uh, anything that has, perhaps, a particular affinity for Horu? Hmm. So he has moon touch swords. <laughs> um, there aren't currently a, l a distinct lack of magic weapons for the three moons, like directly tied to each of them. Hor uh, Horu, specifically, given she is the black sheep of the sisters, uh, mm -hmm. and is barely worshipped. Um, but the you could get a moon touch sword and. They shed a uh, moonlight uh, when, for flavor, it could be the moon of any of the gods, moons you follow. Uh, he has mm -hmm. for you, because you could wield a moon touch short sword, a moon touch rapier, and I think a moon touch scimitar, because I let bards mm -hmm. wield scimitars in my games. Uh, oh, nice. You'd be able to use that. Okay. One of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, knowing that, I think that I would, I will go ahead and take the, or I would like to take the deck of oracles. Um, and perhaps there is a way that I could uh, work it off, as it were. I'm quite a talented musician and storyteller, after all. Unless there is uh, something in particular that you would like as a favor. Only a persuasion check. Because technically, Alistair might be able to get you this as well, but it would cost two items. <laughs> um, yes, yes. We're only uh, a persuasion check with advantage. Persuasion? Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, is there a way to do advantage when I do the little rolling in the um, thing? Or should I just uh, rolling in my character sheet? Or should I just roll it twice? There is, but it's hard to toggle. So I would just roll it twice and we'll take the highest number. Whoa! Uh, 24. He walks up to you. <laughs> leans in. I need you to join me in whispers. Okay. Uh, in Discord? Yep, it's the channel. It's the 1v1.
fair. All right, and with that, he will shake your hand. It is a deal, then. Okay, awesome. Oh, um... And you are... You can tell them after the fact, if you want, just not in this exact moment, what the uh, deal was. Or you can keep it secret uh, and keep them guessing. How charging me right now? So I should take the gold out. Uh, for the deck? Yeah. Especially what you have offered gonna give you a further discount he's gonna get he will sell it to you for 450 gold pieces oh. all right it is I only fair it. given <laughs> what you have offered me oh she will uh smile demurely <laughs> all right anything else you are looking into does he have potions Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. We should, uh, we should get some potions, so, I think. Uh, they're uh, over here the in the reader. the null shopping set. And most of you should have cast readers. You started with those. Um, oh, okay, okay. Uh, but for this, he, for potions, he has 50 standard potions of healing in stock. He has 10 greater healing in stock. He has a potion of superior... He has five potions of superior healing in stock. And then he has... Stamina potions. Right. That he can sell to one per person. Mm -hmm. Now a stamina potion. And this is why they're also very pricey. They're a thousand gold. If you drink the stamina potion. You take a short rest. Okay. One full hour. You gain the benefits of a long rest. Amazing. That's pretty good. But he can only sell one to one person. Each, and then it takes a week for you to be able to buy it again. Do we know how dangerous this quest we're going on is? Or do we? is it just vague? You have no clue. But you should assume oh. that buying healing potions is a good idea. I'm going to buy two yeah, greater healing potions. Okay. I'm going to buy two regular healing potions, please. All right. The 200 gold from that. Who was who was our frontline fighter? Do we have one of those? Arlena. Arlena. Okay, Alistair is gonna hand over one of the greater to Arlena. Thank you very much. Of course. And he's gonna keep doing. Right. Unless there is anything else you would like to purchase of Ziri, I'm going to move to Devonar. That's me. Oh, wait, no, I'll go back to Arlena, then Devonar. Arlena, was there anything else mm -hmm. aside from the rogues mantle you would like to purchase today? Um, if, since I'm being given a greater healing potion, no, I'm okay. Okay. Devonar. Yes. What do you want? I want to acquire a belt of vigor and okay. a witch's ring. Very well, that is easy enough to do. All right, Melvin. He looks to you. What an interesting young man. Thank you, my mother says the same thing. I'm sure she does. She's a lovely lady. But you must be careful. You are messing with things you do not quite understand. Anyways, what okay. would you like to purchase? <laughs> Super ominous. That's cool. Uh, well, kind of like that cloak, but that... I don't know. I don't like people stealing my style. I can make it into a hoodie for you. <laughs> I was thinking more like leather trench coat type deal. That is easy oh. enough to do upon your attunement to the item. Uh, yeah, I was thinking... How, wait, how much is it? It is 400 gold. 400 gold, okay. So, I was thinking... Um, I noticed over here, this uh, nice-looking ring of health. Mmm, yes. I was thinking... Uh, I got hit the other day, and I didn't like that very much. So, I was thinking maybe... The ring of health and... Uh, the, the cloak... That is easy enough to do. 
think I can afford that. Uh, yeah, you can. Do I, do I get a discount? Everyone else gets a discount. Well, at the end of your I... totals, you may dock off. So basically, you guys can each save 200 if you're bulk buying. Ah, sick. You're also yeah, first-time should... customers, so... He wants you to buy a his shop overlord luxuries. <laughs> Let's just, just be honest. Mm. You gotta keep him coming back. Yeah. Do you know what Lord Luxury like looks like? Is he like not quite as slobber debonair? Like what are we talking about? Uh, make he, me like, a history or something. Make me a history a check, F Ziri, with advantage. Uh, yes. And anyone yeah. else who wants to know about him, he's pretty easy to recall information on. Oh Lord. I love Lord well, Luxury. Yeah. Ten is the DC, because he wants everyone to know his name. 19. Well, you just gonna get hilariously. So. Hey. All right. That's easy. Lord Luxury is the wealthiest man in all of Socrath. Where is he? Here he is. He is a dwarf. He is a dwarf Ganassi. Um. And he is one of the founders of the Tailors, alongside. Uh, the god, new god, newborn god, Vethin. Um, he is the master of the seam of the poppet. Uh, he has little wooden dolls that help run his shop with him. Uh, he is a very crafty businessman. He has been living in Vanheim for an untold number of decades. Uh, he has a lot of business sense. He's got a lot of properties all across the continent and a number of chain stores, whereas Dubois only has this one. Uh, he is in a friendly, air quotes, rivalry with Dubois, and Lord Luxury is also one of the rumored members of the Lord's Council. And yes, he owns Lord Luxury's Customs, also known as LLC. I sent a quick no. important DM. Oh, yep, let me rip. The, uh, I feel like, uh, Lord Pinky. I feel like Prince has, like, the, like, bespoke like exclusive sort of uh, experience with only this one shop versus Lord Luxury having shops all over the place. So, you know. Yee yee yee. But if he's able to transport people here, I imagine that having multiple shops would be just more of an expense. Mm hmm. I do have a question, Mr. Dubois. Hmm? You said you were expecting us. You've heard of us before. <laughs> he just chuckles. Ominous. I mean, we are part of the famous uh, new house, after all. I suppose it is true. I guess you can say that. He just smirks. If he could see if his expressions on his face. <laughs> I can try them. Second. I actually know where that is. Give me one second. This guy is super sus. Oh, weird. I'm... Um, hold on. I guess we're just famous, guys. No, I'm messaging famous. someone. <laughs> we're celebrities. Famous. I could have sworn I had it saved.
I completely forgot that hey, he was just standing in the Hey, no. I can't find your backstory. Where do you, Where is it? <laughs> uh -oh. I know you sent it to uh -huh. me. I have the basic details, but I'm wanting to just double check some stuff. Um, I don't know. I sent it to you and I don't remember where it is. I know. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking in our DMs and I'm like, I don't see it. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll hash it out later. Yeah, we'll I have some. Don't worry. It. Yeah, that is so weird. Unless you emailed it to me. I don't think it did. Ah, well, well, we'll see what we can do to find it. Alrighty. But yes, with that, if there is nothing else, I will see the rest of you later. And boop, he kicked out of his shop. Nope. Just ejected. <laughs> the Hi. No, thank you, Lilith. Pardon? <laughs> I'm still here. Yes, that is because I need to talk to you about something real fast, Lilith. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. And then, meanwhile, you guys return. Meanwhile. After a moment, no, Lilith will return to you as you all plop out. You'll see a look of momentary panic on Alistair's face as Lilith is not with him. Don't worry, I'm here. Cliff is going to look at you all. Well, I've got my purchases. I will have some business to attend to. I will see you when our downtime is over. Bye. Take care. <laughs> oh, that. That was pretty rude. That was abrupt. But as that. mysterious as ever. I'm sure he has his reasons. Wouldn't want things any other way. So, where to next? Well, as that goes, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something weird. I'm actually gonna start with Arlena, uh, in downtime. Then I'll roll for everyone else. Arlena, uh, can yes. I ask a quick question? Oh, absolutely. What? Uh, am I able to go underneath this uh wagon caravan thing? Not even with your stature. It is low, 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 low to the ground. <laughs> you need to be like would I would I be able to put something underneath it? Depends on what it is, but maybe. Plastic uh, explosives. Could I attempt a stealth check? <laughs> you may attempt to do so. Oh yeah. Excellent. It's all coming up, Melvin. It's all coming up. It's all coming up. Perfect. Yes. Yep. You, you see uh, yeah. Melvin groan loudly as he, like, kind of goes prone. Uh, I would like to take my immovable rod and place it underneath the wagon in a way oh. where the wagon wouldn't really be able to move at all. That Once might, I activate it. That will not be doable, unfortunately, due to the dimensions and the very small amount of... There's not enough width underneath there to fit that in an angle where it would work. No. I'm Are sorry. Trying... Very smart. Could be useful in a future encounter. <laughs> You're basically trying to put like a boot on it, like a car. Yeah, just trying to put a boot <laughs> on it. <laughs> they just park wherever they want, you know? So gotta wait for the authorities to show Are up. Are you trying to commit a crime again, Move? No, I'm booting their car. <laughs> I, I uh, think that's a crime. No, this, this is a crime. Oh, Acting like they own the place. They probably paid to be here. They didn't pay me. I paid them. Yeah, not us. They probably paid the headmaster. This is how a merchant works, yes. I'm just saying. They could have parked anywhere. They parked in the main thoroughfare. Yes, they didn't have to park sideways. I, I agree. Yeah, see? See? They're bullying the road. I don't like. Oh my god, what a hot mess of this guy is. <laughs> Alright, but Arlena, we're going to be starting with you. Because you messaged okay. me something very interesting that you wanted to do. Uh-huh. What would you like to do for your two days of downtime? 
well, we're going to be doing some research and some investigation. All right. That, I would say, we'll go into the main area of the academy first. And then okay. from there, perhaps you want... To... Oh, wait, no, I can actually take you to the library. You can go to the basic level. Um... Oh, wait, no, just, yeah, the, it'll be this main area. My apologies. <sighs> You're not cool, that cool yet. You don't have clearance. <laughs> sure, no tokens are on here from you guys before. Okay, yep, I'm going to just toss you in here, and then, depending on what you want to do, you may be able to go upstairs to the big library. Ooh. So, you go into the standard floor level where there are some basic archives and books that can be easily rented out and read. What are you looking into? Well, first and foremost, doing some research into old gods and trying not to be obvious, but searching for information on these tear stones that she overheard that conversation in our last session. Hmm. Make me an investigation check. At disadvantage, given the research subject. Okay. Um, and it's struggling and it's just rolling normally. Mm. Oh. No. Rolling again, and so we could try to take the lowest. Why mm. is this dice so slow? Do you Holy have digital cow. dice activated? Uh-huh. Oh, turn those off. That actually does I that that actually equates to it on beyond 20 sometimes. It'll wait until your the roll finishes going. Uh, so you can turn those off and it'll actually roll quicker. Um, I need to figure out how to do that. But... Go into character builder. So like as if you were making the sheet and go all the way back to the beginning, it'll be on that options. Turn di like digital dice on or off. Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes that can slow it down. But uh, with a natural one, you are having a hard time finding this. And it's kind of poetic that... The the subject you're looking on is very hard to find books on. Uh, you don't find anything. You can find books on gods. Find a whole detailed list of the Pantheon, Dark, Light, and the newer editions talking about the new Pantheon, the Grey Pantheon. <laughs> but after some time, you go to a Cogwork archivist. Uh, because if you can't find it, they know where it is. This one right here. What would you broach the subject with? I need information on the older gods. How would I go about acquiring that? Analyzing. Books relating to the Pantheons are on this floor, the third shelf. And points to the one that you were just at, reading about the Pantheons. The collections of the Pantheon Light Dark Light and dark would be found over there, chronicled by one of the Accords. However, books on the Grey Pantheon are further down on the shelf. It's like the best I can do at an automated voice, but it is speaking in the best automated voice it has. Return did, to the root. Did you just say that? No, no. No, oh, okay. I'm imagining that, that, that it's the equivalent of Siri going return to the root. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, do you bring up uh, you bring up old gods, I assume, as well. Old gods. No terms found. Uh, divine relics. Divine relics. History of Remnants and Their Powers by Reed Ryler. You'll find that on the t in the library sec in the upper libraries. In the standard 
section. Do I have clearance to access this? These books are in the standard section of the library. Clearance is allowed. Alright. Thank you. And now I will make my way up to check those books. Library time! Look at that library. Yo, hook me up with the book. Alright, give me a second. I gotta put the other archivists here too. Knowledge. Here. And as you arrive, one wheels up to you. Welcome. What can I direct you. you towards? Divine relics. Hmm. Tomes of remnants and their properties by Reed Ryler. Goes over there for you to follow. Trying to find my token. Hold on. Okay. Alright, so which one am I following? Uh, this one right here. And he will reach his... He'll go... Because these are all super tall, high shelves. So his waist will go up. Grabs a book. Comes back down and hands it to you. Appreciate it. Thank you. No worries. If there is anything else we can get for you, let us know. Alright. Is there anybody else in this area of the library? Uh, hold on. Gotta grab a few, because there are a few people here. Yeah, yeah. You. Definitely you. And last but not least is going to be Johnny Cool. Cool. Because Johnny Cool thinks libraries are cool. I imagine every time someone says that name, Melvin just gets like a tickle in the back of his head. Uh, well, there are a few individuals in the library, such as Jonathan Kreslin, Johnny Cool, <laughs> High Master Reniel D, Padazroni, Malcolm Duskin, and Akoya, just to name like the notable ones. And Reniel has monopolized an entire table for himself. <laughs> Alright. Does not look like anybody is nearby here, so she's going to move to here. And she's going to read the book basically huddled in the corner. Alright, and you're looking for any information on tear stones. Tear and tear stones. That way she can try to get any knowledge on that whatsoever. You peruse. This is about remnants, the very powerful vestige-like weapons throughout the continent, as well as some that were brought here from the old world by the heroes of the Moonflower. This is a catalog of the known remnants and what they can do. Nothing on tear or tear stones. Hmm. You think perhaps you may have to be more direct with a, an archivist. Alright. 
The oh, archivist sees archivist. that you have finished the book and goes and puts it back. Is there anything else we can help you with? First, are any inquiries uh, recorded? We have only a few recording crystals. I mean, if I ask for a specific type of book, do you have do you keep a documentation of what I ask for? Only if it is within your clearance. Do you have any books regarding someone named Tyr? <laughs> it lowers down. Head goes down for a moment. Processing. Processing. Looks at you. Discard any notions of Tyr. Such books are forbidden. Give up this search. You have been warned. Interesting. And it looks back at you the whole time. It's backing up. So, you're looking for books on the... On Therian. <laughs> you see him show up right behind you. <laughs> you know that they're she's not... Gonna the... pull, she's gonna pull out her knife and hold it right to the person's throat, like, immediately turning around. Yeah, he's hanging off of, uh, you notice he's hanging off of, uh, the shelf. Hi. Couldn't help but over here that you're looking into Therium? I specifically made sure that there was nobody here, so that way no one would hear me. How the heck did you get over here? Goblin Elthiers. Should have known. Therian technology... And Therium are very hard subjects to learn about here. I don't talk about the city for a reason. You're talking about a whole different thing. Tear? I've never heard of a tear. But if you're looking for a book on Therium and any Therian documentation, I can net that for you. I have clearance. He holds up a little gilded card and wiggles it in his fingers. Pockets it. There's always a catch. What's yours? No, I'm just interested to see what you do with this. Plus, if you guys do that job for me, that more and less pays for this too. I'm sorry job for you yes rem remember i said if you guys want some work you can do some work i need you guys to get oh. me some scrap because uh some some of those harbinger soldiers are using theory and technology anyways i make no promises but i will see what i can do okay <laughs> he's just gonna walk with you uh into the restricted area oh. he's with me very well. What can we get for you, Zeroni? Looks at you, Arlena. Oh. Looking for books on Therian. Hmm. Very well. Brings back a whole ass stack. <laughs> we have documentations of Therian. Therian humans and Therian races. <laughs> And he's mad that library cards are showing up again. Um, Therian technology, the great collapse of Therian, the drowned city, mana, magic circuits, and magecraft. Those hold three on, words. Go back to the previous. Those three words. Paying at your mind. Mana. Magic circuits. Magecraft. I want test books, please. Very well. And he pulls out... I gotta change the music. This is more ominous. We're back in the building.
He pulls out from underneath a few stacks a leather, a tattered leather bound book wrapped in chain. This book like sealed with the chains or? Yep. This book has been locked with chains. We have been unable to open it for quite some time. But this is a book of magecraft theory. Interesting. Magecraft theory, utilizing magic circuits and mana, as well as ma technique, magecraft techniques. This book is by an unknown author. The name is most likely within the book. You think you could unlock this? Oh. And something I'm about to take this the book out of the library. You are. You're allowed to take it out for Brent rent. I'm not reading it here. Would you like to take, take out it. this book, Master Zeroni? Yeah. <laughs> Very well. Return it in one month. That should be more than enough time. That's going to be interesting to see what you do with that. Uh, have fun with that. And yeah, if you guys want to do that job for me, just let me know. You guys seem cool. I can make you stuff. You can do the black market. And he disappears. And as you begin to walk out of the restricted area... We're very Before pressed. she does, she's putting she's putting the book directly into the bag of holding before anybody else sees. As you walk out, Renayel looks at you. Ah. You again. Anyways. Yes. I do not know how you are in the restricted section, but I must continue my research. He goes to the same pile that you just took from. <laughs> Internally. Suck it, bitch. I got it first. All right. Uh, she's going to take it back to her room and she's going to pop the lock. Uh, All right. I need I you to make me a to... sleight of hand check. What advantage? Right. Sorry. Still recovering. I apologize. All good. Uh, slight of hand with advantage. Oh, ho, 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 ho. let's fish for that crit. Twenty three. You needed a twenty two. You are able to. I. You don't know how. Just intuitively crack this open and you open it and it says magecraft theory the study of magic circuits mana and the utilization of magecraft techniques and you see written as the author interesting She's going to pull out a regular notebook and she's going to start copying details. Now, that's the curious thing. You start to read this book. It speaks of magic that only Therians were able to possess in their prime and still do, known as mana. This mana allows them to be sourceless magic, not having to take from ether. Or, in back in the day, the weave, or it was destroyed. And it allowed them to even regain their magic very quickly, if strong enough. But then it talks of magic circuits, rain, that, which is how their mana flowed. A nervous system imbued throughout their entire being. That would strengthen their body's durability and capabilities. 
be able to cast magic with mana. You sift through the book. You find yourself just tied to it, unable to take your attention away to multitask on writing down notes. And you see the techniques that it speaks of. Combative techniques, different ways to apply magecraft in martial ways. Namely, you read techniques that are very similar to your own. I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. This one is at disadvantage. Hold on. I have to keep closing the uh, the window because otherwise I notice that it crashes my system. So mm. there you go. Your mind rushes. There's nothing on the void. Yay, the void. Your mind rushes. And you have your brain hurts and you kind of pass out for a moment. As your body begins to burn. You feel yourself on a cold metal table. It's done. However, the process was an abject failure. Give us exact details, Lux. We were able to surgically imbue her with magic circuits. However, despite our conditioning and training, we have not activated. I fear to say this was a wasted investment. Which is disappointing. This one had so much potential to be the right one. So what do we do? Kill it? Her. We do not kill her. That would be a waste of materials and resources. These are finite. We don't have many of these. If her crest activates, or the circuits activate, one day, it is possible. But they aren't now, which is what we need. Now, we will make the best of our investment. What about next of kin, family? They sold her to us. Coin, as they all have. A few others from her line. I will say... Her brother has far more potential. Perhaps we have a winning process there due to age and physique. So what well, shall we do with this one? Send her to Endsgate. Have her fight in the front lines in the Darklands. We'll keep an eye on her there. Keep her from... Going too far, her circuits activate, then we will reclaim her. Might as well make the best of what we've given her. We'll keep her in place. And you come back too. I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw again to see if you can, like, perpetuate this vision, to see if you can hold on to anything else. This one is regular save. Come on. That's good. The last bits you hear and what of her memories and have her exactly going around claiming we're doing this. You know what we did? Scramble the brain. And seal it up. That way, even if she does remember, no one's going to believe her. 
No one knows what Therians are truly capable of. Let alone us putting magic circuits in others. For his sake. And that is when you like come back and you look at your arms and underneath your veins is a, like a red glow that fades. Circuit pattern. This book contains knowledge that cannot just be copied. It can be read, learned, and mastered. You have found huh? a book of magecraft. Now, this opens up the path I had already been planning for you, but got greatly benefited. Which I give paths to multiple players. Depends on them to pro like proceed with it. You've opened up the path. Does not have an exact name in your case. However, if you took time to study this book, you could learn great abilities from it. Tap into your latent magic circuits and mana that has been sealed within you. This gives you a few options here. This can give you either the minor magecraft feat, which will give you temporary buffs when you use the abilities within them. You can also instead take the magic crest feat. Or you can study the ways, check their names. Of the mis the uh, mystic mayhem, or the way of the shade wave, both rogue talents. One of which is already very close in combat style to what you have been practiced for quite some time. So basically, we're to study this book, read it for a certain amount of hours. You can either get one of the two feats. Or you can change your subclass into either the Mystic Mayhem Rogue or the Shade Wave. I will have to uh, read over those so I can make that choice. Mm -hmm. so. I would be I'd, I'd be giving you the information for them. Yeah. Uh, but the okay. base I can give you the I can give you the like the idea of what each one does. The Shade Wave allows you to channel your magic circuits and mana to briefly flicker between two spaces and use that to advance and overwhelm unsuspecting foes. The way of the shade wave is a way of darkness as well as shaping the shadows into tools that you can use for yourself in combat. So one is more combat-oriented, one is more buff-slash-debuff-oriented. And I will send you what they do. Okay. Appreciate that. But yes, and but then... That, yeah, she'll, she'll, she'll spend then the next couple days reading through this while, while also making additional notes in her own notebook just in case when she gives it back if she needs to review it again and... Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. But yeah, you have opened up that path. Told you we can get weird with it. Hooray. But also, yeah, uh, it worked out because I was like, I already know what actually went on with Arlena because I love me some... There's more to the situation. That guy, that Lord Lux was experimenting on you. You're an experiment. And you don't know where he is anymore. But yes, so during your travels throughout these two days, you will be able to get requires, I believe. Let me see. It requires five days of reading. To tap into that stuff. 
So you'll be able to okay. decide from there what you want to do. But uh, basically, in the middle of your travels, you'll be able to do what you want. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to do on your downtime? Um, aside from eating trauma eating, fest, eating, keeping, <laughs> keeping her keeping her room locked up tighter than Fort Knox, um, probably not too much else aside from like general exercise. And the the book when the book is either in her hands being read or it's in the bag of holding. He. What a fucked up day. <laughs> Send this to you as well. Alright, give me one second, and then we'll move over to... Hmm. Then from there, I'll... If you make the decision on what you want to do with that book... That will be when I port. I'll port it to Beyond, just to save myself some sanity. Yep. <laughs> also, the art for the Shade Wave Rogue, you might like it. Ooh, that that is neat. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> so that's all the details there, and I can so show you. Uh, the mage crap, like the abilities that you would get from that too, because if you do the subclass, you still get access to minor magecraft features, which is pretty cool. But yeah, let me roll for everyone else a d4. Alistair. Move Hello. back to you, buddy. During your two days of downtime, I'll move back here and I'll change the music to something more happy. Uh, we'll we'll see how happy this goes. So much lore today. Yep, that's how it be. More. And uh, oh yeah, another thing. You guys can go down to Amber Point, which is like the college town here, even though it has been it's kind of recovering from undead attacks. Time for a bar crawl. Alright, what would you like to do? Alright. So, shockingly, he's also going to do some research. Um, He's going to do some research, and he's going to... Uh, Elwyn is not at the Academy right now, right? Not that you know of. Okay. Then first, he's, he's just going to send off a letter uh, to Elwyn if he can. It would not reach her in time. Not by snail yeah. mail. Didn't think so. All right, then. Uh, if you would want to go... do messaging services, those are possible. Ooh. Would that cost money? It would cost you probably, depending on who you're sending it to, uh, 50 gold. Okay, then he'll do that. He's going to send... Uh, so 50 gold? Mm -hmm. Let me check my timeline because I gotta make sure where she's at right now too. I think she's with her boy. Boy toy say uh You guys are on Irene the second. Yeah, she can fit that in her schedule. Alright, so what do you say? It's the it's the sending spell, so twenty-five okay. words. Okay, 25 words. Uh, he's gonna start with, Hello, Elowen. I'd like to speak to you privately, if I can. It's quite urgent. Uh, and that's all it's gonna be. Alistair. Slightly occupied at the moment. But I can make say a wait. It will have to be quick. Meet me in Amber Point. I'm not allowed to. And you, like, you sense her extend it. I'm not allowed to be on school grounds at the moment. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. 
Okay, then he's gonna yeah he's gonna go down to to Ember Point then. Just speak to Elowen. All right, I can show off Ember Point. It's doing better. I swear, it's doing better. It's no longer on fire. I mean, a little fire never hurt nobody, you know. I mean, Green Gl the other place just blew the fuck up. Let's be fair. A little arson's good for the soul. Uh, yep. Zoom in, zoom out. This is a big boy. Uh, but yeah, cool. you you take down a uh, an air skiff down to uh, Amber Point. It's some of the buildings are damaged. They are definitely in repair from the attack. The side attack um that was done upon them during the arcane surge good let me see i'm gonna be fucked up if she took you to the church <laughs> yeah we're going to the church <laughs> and you hear you get another sending meet me at the temple of dark and light He will do so. And it's that big dome temple right here. Hmm. Oh, it's an interior. Yeah. I don't skim budget <laughs> production value. Let me go grab her. She, where's this? Bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to say that. She's problematic. <laughs> Not even human. Alistair anymore. thinks she's neat. You wait for a while. Assume you're just sitting at one of the chair like you could sit at the pews or whatnot. And you hear the door open. And you see this individual. You have not seen her in some time, especially since the incident. But you see a half-elven uh, woman, mid-twenties. Her hair has grown longer and unkempt. She wears a white dress with a black corset, and she wears a leather trench coat over her shoulders and a wide-brimmed hat with these fake little studded horns atop it. She is missing her left eye. Very similar to two of her other boys. Uh, and she just walks in and you hear her heels clack against the floor. And she's got a big old bag over her shoulders. Uh, she's clearly been shopping. Uh. Alistair. It's good to see you. Apologies, I was in Ethereos just now. It has been a while. It is good to see you again. Yes, I have been awake for a bit. And how is your recovery going? Fine. Though I'm surprised you contacted me now. Is it about the assignment? Yes, I wanted to ask you some questions. I'm surprised you found out I was your handler for the assignment. Good on you. It was fairly obvious. Mm. I will be watching over you all as you travel. I'll be with you as well. To make it to your destination. This is something that I'm interested in, given its possible connections to something bigger. I she'll sit down. Would like to speak to you about our benefactor. Oh, he contacted you. Yes, and I would like to know your opinion on the matter. 
What do you think of him? At first... Why are you associated with him? At first, I was not interested. Just gonna look around first. Good, we're not being watched. At first, I was not interested. August is also in on this, the Grand Mage. Given his status and position, it is very beneficial to the Viscount. I wasn't interested at first. And then Saya recruited me. He claims to have had a change of heart. But someone who's done such horrible things, can they truly change that much? Hmm. Well, he's honest on that one. That is for certain. Times have changed, and so has his perspective. He realizes his ambitions at the time were dated and impossible. Now... He seeks to do something new, to bring the Order to its fullest potential. He has plans for the three of us. Plans that you're not a part of. But he wants buyers. He wants others to be in on the new turn. I will be forthright. This plan of his, is it going to bring harm to innocent people? No. In fact, it will make those of us in this path even stronger. Is that at the expense of anyone else? Just ourselves. We'll be opening ourselves up to far more potential. Saya has already reached that point. He's evolved his partner. It is meant to make our connection with our pact even bigger and eventually bond us together temporarily instead of permanently. The Viscount originally just thought simply splicing the two forms together with biomancy would work. Fuse them in an unholy amalgamation. He's found that connecting the ether of each creature through the the host and the pact partner willingly a bond, a connection to be more effective. And it's temporary too. Think of it as a form you would take. And mm. she would get more power as well. Looking at Lilith, she'd be able to switch into a different vessel. Something more fitting, more strong, and swap back. Hmm. And lastly, do you trust this man, and do you swear to him your loyalties? Oh no, I'm only loyal to myself. I've gotten quite a bit of power in my comatose state. And I'm not giving it up. We cannot afford to lose our power. Very well. At first I was going... I was going to reject the offer. But... From what I've heard from you... I think I should reconsider. For now, at least. <laughs> then welcome to the Inner Circle. And you will have to play nice with Saya. I will do my best, but... Our benefactor, I must admit... Without... Within a few moments of knowing me, or contacting me... He told me all of your guys' association with him... And as well as attempted to use my wife as leverage to, jo to make me join. These are two things I do not like. Mm. I do not trust him in the slightest. 
While he's telling the truth about your wife, bringing her back would be easy. Child's play to someone like him. But I assure you, another thing. Saya did not kill your wife. He didn't hurt me or August. Why would he? It was something else. And what is this something else? A few dangerous entities. The Butcher of the Thals. The Bloody Butcher. And the Thrice Damned. They're who attacked us. But do your work right. And I'll be watching you very carefully during these travels to the destination. And I'll reward you with some more knowledge. I appreciate it. She gets up to walk. And another thing. Don't dredge up anything silly. If you think of doing anything stupid, I'll know. She just smiles and walks away. The past is in the past. You cannot change it. All you can do is get stronger and move on. Use that pain. Persevere. Now I have to go back to my darling Saya. I'm sure he's like a lost puppy. With she will teleport back. Because at this time she because at this point in time she was out shopping with Saya and the <laughs> whirlwinds. <laughs> Alistair will let out a sigh and look over to Lilith. Well, I've gotten the names I was looking for. That's terrifying. Let's get to work. She consumed her pact partner. Hmm. Rest assured, I would never do that to you, Lilith. I would hope not. I would kill you. <laughs> but of course. Is there anything else you'd do in these two days? Uh, he's going to do a little bit of research on how he's essentially going to look for any way to empower Lilith that he can. Uh, best thing to do there. One second. You arrive at the library. The archivist comes up. Hello, what can I get for you? Uh, he's gonna look up to the the archivist. I'm looking for research materials on possibly empowering a familiar. Hmm. Occultist research and amplification. It would be best to talk to Master Veyren, or second, what's his name? Uh. Starts with a T. Talren. And you know that Master Veyran, obviously, first and foremost, I have art to show. <laughs> Master Veyran is the head of the Order of the Occultist. And you know Talren is her son. Who is also her assistant, but he is in a different track of wizardry. Second. Uh, either of them would probably be useful individuals to talk to. Though you suspect that Talren would probably be the easier one to get a hold of. Hmm. Wasn't it Master Veyren that was said to have plans for Alistair? No. That was, that was the Viscount. Viscount has plans for you. He said, don't let 
uh, they like don't let Veyren get involved. Gotcha. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it's basic fact that she was the one he experimented on. Hmm. During his... that one, then. Yeah, because like the reason she looks like the way she does. She was exp she was his live test subject, and then because she, she was his apprentice, she ousted him, alongside Akira Yukidan and a few others, and defeated him. Sent to super jail. Hmm, super jail. <laughs> um. Okay. Is there any independent research materials I could acquire? Restricted at this level. Hmm. How does one gain higher clearance? You must submit the proper paperwork, which will be considered in 180 days. Hmm. Very well. Where could I find Talred? <laughs> the torso goes up very high looks around points in a general direction it point he points it over there <laughs> alistair heads in that direction <laughs> give me one second i'm uploading his token you never know what people want to do i'm gonna do all the things check what wizard is he He's not an occultist. He was not allowed. He One second, you head over in his direction. We're here. And to give his proper description, because I neglected to do so, uh, he is a tall blue skin tiefling long horns almost like a gazelle uh he wears deep blue and silver robes with uh white sleeves on on them uh bits of silver metal and he's got arcane pouches and scroll pouches uh and you see he's got a particular satchel that is holding a book and you hear scribing on it hmm as if it is doing the process for him. Uh, and you know he is an evoker wizard, so evocation. But he also studies different fields of ma uh, of wizardry and other ma forms of magecraft. Um, you come up and you see him and he closes his book. Ah, oh, Alistair, I believe. Yes, it is a pleasure to meet you. I've heard I... much about you from my mother. What is it that I can do for you? Have you now? Yes. Um, what have you heard? You show great promise. However, you are a bit distracted. I see. Well, speaking of that promise, I heard you might be a person of interest to speak to on learning how to empower my dear companion. You seek to empower Lilith. 
Is that correct? Yes. You should disregard such things. Immediately. The current... Why? The status quo of the occultist is as it is for a reason. Your pacted partner is put into this form. Keep them diminished yet able to aid you. If you were to give them more power, there is risk that the cracks in your contract could break and they could turn against you, attack you. Hmm. It is not wise to give your partner more power than they should have. One thing my mother has forbid for specific reasons. Do you know that Saya Silitus Thal contracted a mighty fallen celestial on his first try? I heard. Very dangerous. That one has very specific bindings overlaid throughout it. If that one were to gain power, that would be very bad. Probably try and fight back against him, who is still an active member of the field. From what I heard, he dropped out. The shame. It's quite formidable and quite powerful ones. But another reason is, your partners are in their diminutive forms. It affects their minds as well. Being in the form that they are in, such as love being a bird, gives her more bird-like qualities. Diminuizes her greater intelligence to a point and her capabilities. It is security measures. If you were to, as they say, take the training wheels off, it's hard to say how well you could control her. I do take offense to that. I am quite strong. He looks at a crumb on the floor. Goes towards it to peck at it and then just turns back. <laughs> See what I mean? Though I hmm. am interested in such concepts of further empowering the ways of the occultist, as long as my mother is in charge. Uh, one, I won't be allowed to learn such magic. Two, I do not think that there will be any change. Not after what Aleph did. Hmm. It is a shame you are not allowed to learn of the occultist magic. I sense you have far more promise than I. <laughs> I am fine studying a multitude of things. I see. Well then. I suppose I should be on my way then and find a new subject to study. Very well. And I mean it, Alistair. Be very careful. But of course. Hopefully, uh, I heard your your unit is already going to be quite busy, but if you have the time, step in by one of my lectures. I'd be happy to. Uh, then Alistair's gonna go off and find research materials on enchantments. Just any kind of enchantment? Specifically enchantments that can be placed on like creatures. <laughs> <laughs> he is totally going to empower Lila still. That... Different ways though. Yeah, uh, you do look into a few different books, and none of the books you read talk of empowerment of familiars. You have a very big feeling as to why, but also you have a feeling that there is only one person that could give you such knowledge. And he is going to avoid that person like the plague. Um, okay. Then Alistair's going to spend the rest of his two days. Well, he's going to head back to his room, and he's gonna say to Lilith, how do we feel about a bit of, um, experimentation? Oh, uh, well, in my older days, I would say, wouldn't say no to it, depending on the person, but, uh, right now I am a bird. Hmm. Lilith. Oh, you meant magical experimentation. Yes, ma magical experimentation, Lilith. Oh, my. Um, 
I am not diverse to it. I mean, averse to it. Power is something that we demons crave endlessly. Now, I know the answer to this question may come from the fact that your mental state is inhibited by the pact, but out of curiosity, if you got more power, would you consider betraying me? No, I quite find you charming. As I long as you... Like sure. <laughs> <laughs> Demon is sus. Eleven, you think she's telling the truth? Hmm. As I thought. Um. And I find your company enjoyable as well, Elliot. You're one of the few people that were there, there for me during a very bad time. I would hope so. I know everything about you that you've allowed me to. I would not dream of betraying you. Well then, shall we try a few experiments then? How so? Well, first we need to see if perhaps bolstering your arcane energies would suffice. And he mm. is... He's going to try and bolster Lilith by expending his own spell slots to try and increase her magical power. Make me an Arcana check. Hmm. This does pertain so you do keep that advantage. 18. You put a little bit of your magic in. Nothing happens. Hmm. Was, was that supposed to do something? I was hoping. And he's... He's just gonna spend the next two days just... Trying different methods to see if he can give Lilith even the tiniest bit of extra power uh and each attempt is a failure you now understand yes. that you don't have the necessary knowledge or means to do this not without help and there is only one person who could help you Damn. which would be the viscount yeah, all right. I think that's what he's just, that's what he's going to spend his time doing, and then he comes to that realization. Um, for the second day, I guess he'll just, I guess he'll just attend that lecture. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of information. Uh, he, uh, you're going to, uh, a Talren's lecture? Yeah. Oh, right. It's a it's a speaking on uh, old magic, for old forms of magic. It's about the weave, about theory and culture and theory and magic to the best of the knowledge of the people. And it, yeah, it's just a lot of interesting information. Gotcha, gotcha. Right. And... All right, let's see. Melvin. What do you yeah. do on your... Uh, Melvin would like to, well, ha more, not that he wants to, but he has to meet with his therapist. It's mandatory <laughs> weekly meeting. I forgot. Mishka Barnabas. One second.
other one. Oh wait, no, that's the upper floor. I'm on the wrong floor! I have so many floors for this academy, it's not even funny. Production value. I mean, yeah. Gotta get him from the other map. Where did I put okay. There he is. Put you on the right one. No. I'm in the cafe. Oh, nope. Yeah, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Not there. This one. I just get a quick coffee before I go to see my therapist. Mama says I shouldn't have too much caffeine, but she's not here. Boom. Ah, uh, yes, you meet with your therapist, Professor Barnabas. Uh, do I? Where am I? Right here, I focus pinged. Oh, I see now. Yep, right there. Melvin, Hi, it's... Professor Barnabas. It's good to see you, Melvin. Yeah, it's... We're seeing you, all right. Is something the matter? Uh, just, you know, where to begin? And he will pull out uh, a stack of papers that look, that, that are very, it's very neat, unlike the rest of Melvin. Uh, and the rest of his bag, you know, falls onto the floor and kind of spills everywhere. You see, like, a pencil, like, roll and keep rolling for an awkwardly long time. So, you know, make some new uh, colleagues. Maybe friends? I don't know. Some of them not. Some of them definitely not. And that's what I want to get into today. Uh, so while none of oh, Melvin's, dear. like, takes notes on any classes or anything like that, he has pristine notes on those that have that he's felt has wronged him in some way. Oh, he pulls over, okay, God. here we go. Onto the table like a big thunk. Now, where to start? Oh, my, uh, my roommate, Jeff. He's, uh... Boy, he just, he's... Grinding my gears, man. Let me see. Oh, actually, I Melvin. Down. Hold on. Let me add something to this. Uh, Melvin. They digitated without my consent. Melvin, we've talked about this. Yes. You can't write papers of all your the pro people who have caused you problems. Right. You'd... I know. We agree on this. That's no. why I made a list. No. Not a I said. I. We discussed that it is unhealthy to make lists of people that have wronged you. Oh, you said a paper. The paper. Yeah, is it a paper or a list? You know. He narrows his eyes. And we are not talking about the incident the other day, where you threw a book at Johnny. No one else might have seen it. You cannot fool these eyes. He taps his he taps his uh, glasses. Professor Barnabas, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm afraid. You know, I'm just a uh, lowly. He gives you user. the deadest stare, and you see the mark on his face, like this scar, like corrupted mark, just glow. Gonna make an intimidation check on you. <laughs> Hey, 
Can he make it at disadvantage because Melvin is very oblivious? Mm, no. Damn. That's not very high. Can I intimidate him back? You can try with to. the presence of... Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> he beats you. He just stares at you and you feel yourself feel that you, you, you guys maintain eye contact and it gets awkward and awkward and then you, see, you swear you see the mark on his face move a little bit. And you're like, uh... You should get that checked out. That doesn't look healthy. Your behavior is concerning, Melvin. You cannot well, do this Professor again. Well, Professor Barnabas, if, you know, if, if people weren't just mean bullies, there wouldn't be a problem with them. And what I don't is school doing anything about the bullies? You know, my my, my anger fell. Anger bar of Melvin. It's you no know I'm not angry. You are right now. You are at a solid twelve. I need you at a five. Damn, he's good. But if you continue this path of anger, it will get you nothing. No one will be your friend. You find all the small problems with them. And then... Yeah, but this, Professor Bard, but you need to listen to what these problems were. For all you know, these guys could have attacked me or done something worse. You know, I've been swirly before. I've been, you know, pushed around. They play keep away with my bag. But has that happened this year? Especially after the incident last year. No, because I'm standing up for myself now, Professor Barnabas. And I'm standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves. And what has happened? <laughs> oh, well, see, now finally we're getting to the meat of things. So, uh, open this book. Cliff, roommate, you know, we're supposed to be, you know, on good terms. So we're going to be living together. He did use Bardic inspiration on me in the fight. He used it on, like... Some other Jamoke, I don't know. He was like Alistair or something. Uh, Devonar was was late. Didn't have to go to the old school meeting, and apparently that was fine. That's some that's some BS. Um, Cliff ditched me to go to the to the cafe. So that's and that's two for Cliff. Uh, Elena tried to take my cloak. Well, no, Elena did take my cloak. She bought the cloak that I said I was interested in. She's trying to steal uh, my allure. Do you like these sides? He shows off his his uh his trench coat. I'm the so trench cool. coat is very concerning, uh, tire wise. It seems a mean? little. It's so cool. It could make you, you seem more dangerous now. than you are. But I digress. Yeah, dangerous, cool, Professor Barnabas. Dangerous, not cool. I digress. It's Melvin. kind of cool. Oh, and then I think find the nail in the coffin for Cliff. He prestidigitated me without my consent. Totally got rid of the little bits and straps I was going to feed Radicus Finch to. That's actually quite nice of him. Just looking out for your cleanliness. To make my rat starve? That's not very nice. I think your rat is well taken care of. Looking at the obese rat that he sees in front of him. <laughs> uh, I, been, I might have been feeding him too much. You know, sometimes I don't know because um, my dad, can com I can communicate with my dad through this guy. You know, and this is him, another... And I don't know if things will go to my dad or if the rat's just going to eat it sometimes. This is know? another so concerning thing. So I just give it twice as much just in case. This talk of your dad. Oh, yeah. People have ref uh, told me that you speak of your dad and the power he has given you. Melvin, we my both... dad's quite powerful. Oh my god! Professor Barnabas, I forgot the most important thing. I have a sister! Who knew? Melvin, this yes, is... Uh, Erwin. This is worrisome behavior. We know what happened to your father. Stand that making up stories of a father figure gives you confidence and it gives you something to look towards, but you have to stay in the moment, stay present. I know that it has been difficult. My dad gave me Radicus Finch the second. 
And the first, but the first is no more. The first. He, now we have the second. He looks like, huh? But I digress. If your behavior continues like this, there have been a few reports already. They have talked of expelling you from the academy. My mom would probably be pissed if that happened. I would assume so. She would have quite a bit of debt to pay off. Well, you know, it's... Professor Barnabas, what's going to be done with all these bullies? There are bullies everywhere. Have... Nothing has happened to you. They have not hurt you or harmed you. You're fine this Why, year. Because they fear me now. Because I'm... I look dangerous. But if everyone... What about those who don't look dangerous like me, Professor Barnabas? What about, uh... Chloe the, for, in the cafe? They were bullying her. We were given such reports and they were reprimanded and dealt with. They were given detention. For Niall... Uh. Has some yes. service to attend to it is not okay. There are other individuals there that witnessed that, and you did stand up for her. However, take this mission that your your class in the Ether Prima House is going on. You're going to see more of the world than you typically do. It may give you perspective. It may show you how people are on the outside world. They may they lead to some growth. Take it from me. You mean I can get taller? Maybe. But take it from me. Sick. I made some very bad decisions in my past. I was on a dark Quiet. road. And you have heard rumors of Barnabas. Rumors that he was once a part of the There's a whole ass name for these guys. Of the Eyeless Knights. Um, a cult dedicated to Vecna, the Whispered One, that murdered and brutalized in his name. There are rumors that Barnabas is a former reformed member of the Eyeless Knights that sought out Corruptive powers. But has since reformed society. But they're just rumors, of course. But he looks at you. You can fall down a dark path and be alone. You can walk down a path of positivity. And find many allies willing to work with you. And be around you. He just sits up. That is food for thought, my boy. I need you to keep your dream journal in sync. And I need you to make sure you are taking your medication. All right. You have... Medication. Ugh. Are you... Is that supposed to be taking medication? Keep eating your granola. <laughs> They put your medicine in your granola. They put they put it in there because they know you'll eat it. <laughs> but he looks at you. I know you can do great things, Melvin. And he just walks away. And that is where we're gonna end the session. Next session we will get to of Ziri. Apologies, Ale. Um but we'll have some fun stuff for you next session, and then we'll be able to see what Squire is getting up to. Um, I never as Cliff, ask Professor Barnabas, if we could get some some chandeliers in the main area. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you're fucked up. Yes, we got some lore. We got some teases of things to come. Uh, it's gonna be exciting. Uh, so next session for y'all is on December 2nd. And for you guys, I am pretty sure I am I'm not going to do holiday break for y'all uh cuz I'll be able to run you guys no problem until we get into like cuz you're the second, 16th. Oh wow, we'll be we'll be pretty fine for all, for all of your sessions. Um um Ale, are you going to be around for that? 
Yeah, it just really depends. But if like, because I know it is the holiday month. And if we need to adjust accordingly, I can run one shots or other things instead. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Holly, you weren't pick you weren't being picked up in discord. Uh -oh. Sorry, uh, I was saying. So uh, when is it again? Our next, next session, session is the second. the second. And then from there, it would be the 16th and the 30th. I just didn't know if you'd be traveling back from the Philippines at that point. I will, but I think that I might be able to make it work. Okay. So yeah, and then just let me know. We'll play it by ear as we get closer. Because next month for a lot of the other groups, I'm doing, like, character breaks where we're going to do different things. Uh, so if that's another thing we need to do, like, we can just do one-shots, too. Because those are always fun. Uh, but, yeah, we'll pick up there next time. We'll see you all then. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.